Great. So, again, my name is Ricardo Tellez. I am the CEO of this company that it's called The Construct. And uh, there we have developed a method to teach ROS very fast. And that's what I want to share with you. Okay, so but what I'm going to talk today here, uh, what I'm going to talk is uh, the following script. First, I'm going to give you just a little bit about who we are, who is the construct, a few, a few slides. And then we are going to go deep into the problem. Why is ROS so difficult to learn? We are going to attack this. Then I will show you a method that we have created ourselves, a theoretical method, okay? So it will give you the hints for uh, implementing this method by yourself if you want. That decreases this difficulty of uh, learning ROS. And finally, I will show you an implementation of this method. So this method, we have implemented in this way, and we are using it. I'm going to show you the, uh, this implementation. Okay, let's go. So who we, are we? Uh, we are a company that is called The Construct, and we basically do simulations in the cloud. It means that we provide powerful machines to people that want to simulate robots, but they don't have enough power. They don't want to bother with the hassle of uh, doing the simulations by themselves or uh, running in their computers. So by, uh, by using our tool, you can simulate using any type of computer. Doesn't matter, Linux, Windows, Mac, whatever. And what you can do with these simulations? Well, you can do what you can do with a simulator of robots in your own computer, but more. So we use basically our platform of simulations for learning, for programming, and for simulating robots. All of these can be combined at any any way. And you can visit our uh, company website and get uh, a taste of how does it work by visiting www.theconstructing.com. Okay, so this is all about myself. And then uh, I'm going to go directly to the point of why is ROS so difficult to learn? Okay, this is our theory. The first point why ROS is so difficult is because students doesn't have access to the robots. And that is very important point because most of the students, they do have to learn ROS by doing some programs on the screen and watching some uh, topics, being, writing some strings over the screen, but they don't relate this directly to what a robot can do or they want a robot to do something. And we don't believe that this is correct. We actually believe in this uh, constructionism movement, let's say that indicates that learning is not performed because somebody is explaining to you something, but because you are practicing this something. This is called learning by doing. Okay. So if you don't have a robot to practice with, then it's very difficult to learn ROS. We don't say that it's impossible, of course. We have all of us learned without using ro uh, robots, uh, but um, we are talking here to do it fast, okay? Optimize, great. Second re reason, the concepts of ROS are difficult. And that is the fact, uh, ROS is not straight. So unless you have some previous experience with something similar, the concepts that are included into ROS are quite, uh, complicated. Uh, doesn't mean that you cannot get them, but it will take you time. And why are difficult those concepts? Because in ROS, there are many, many steps and concepts that you have to learn and understand prior to see that the robot does something. So it means that you have to learn a lot of steps, a lot of new words, a lot of new ways of working in order to make a robot be make a simple thing like moving. What this happens is that it creates a delayed reward. This means that the connection in your brain between what you are learning that is new for you and you get a result when you apply this new learning is very, is very long in time. So it takes a long time in order for you to see this relation between what you are learning and what it affects on a robot. And that's a reward that is very, 
been delayed. And this, what means, again, is to difficult the learning of a subject, in this case, ROS. Then the third reason that we think it's uh, one of the reasons for making ROS so difficult to learn is that the teachings, there are a lot of materials on the net, uh, a lot of courses over there, but what we see is that the structure of those teachings, of those materials, is made, of course, by teachers, because they want to teach, of course, but it's made actually for themselves, for the teachers. I mean, it's to organize the brain of the teacher and say, okay, so first it comes topics, then it goes services, then it goes actions, but before you have to know that ROS is to know the new operating system because it's a framework. Okay, so yeah, that's very nice. If you understand what you're talking about, this is very good for organizing your knowledge, but it's not useful for a person that doesn't know anything about the subject. And you are putting a lot of concepts, and I say a lot of no noise, into the, the new student brain, so that it makes him, uh, that doesn't, he doesn't know how to discard what is important and what it is not for the moment, for the moment at which the student is located. That is a moment in where he is discovering a, a, the new uh, subject of Ross. Then I call that these kind of materials, I call myself the reference material. So we as teachers, we write material, uh, new materials or documents as a reference, so then later we know, uh, yes, yes, this is located on chapter three. Yes, that has to be on chapter three. On this, on chapter four, because it cannot be for, prior to, to this concept, you cannot put the other one. But we don't agree on that. You can put some concepts that are more advanced at the beginning of the material, because they produce a result. But we are going to see that now. So what I mean by reference material, so if this is the whole knowledge of ROS, this is the whole knowledge, different layers, starting from the beginning, the installation, and then how to uh, make it run on a Linux machine, how to check everything, this is everything. This reference material, it will start teaching by this point, from the very, uh, the latest layer of the knowledge of ROS. And then it will teach you the whole circle at this level. Then it will move to the next one, and then continue, and then to the next one, and then continue, and so on, and so on, until you reach the center. The center is where you actually do something with the robot. In the meantime, you have been creating packages, uh, printing uh, messages in the console, and a lot of that stuff, but nothing with the robots, actually. Okay, so... Given those reasons why it's difficult, we decided to think about how to improve that. And we read a lot of materials, we did a lot of uh, practice and tests, and finally we got with the method that it's been described in this book, it's called the first 20 hours, about how to learn anything fast. So we are based on this book. This book is nothing special, let's say, nothing that everybody already knows, but it's well structured and is uh, uh, it's fun to read also. So, what are the the steps of our method that are based on this book? First, we do a deconstruction, a deconstruction of ROS. What does it mean? What does it mean? A deconstruction. It means that we are going to identify identify which are the really important parts of ROS. ROS has a lot of things, but actually there are just a few that are essential. So we are going to identify which ones are the essential ones, and these are the ones that we are going to teach. So we are not creating a reference material starting from the beginning. In our courses, you will not see how to install ROS. Doesn't matter how to install ROS. Somebody has done it already. Somebody will do it for you, or you will take a weekend and install it. But once you know how to use it, and you, your your brain is set into another level that is not the initial level where you don't know anything and you have to start by installing. Okay. Well, anyway, so we identify the essential parts of ROS, and 
these are the ones that we are going to teach. Of course, we remove on the second step, we remove a lot of material. We remove the installation. We remove what is ROS. Do, do you really believe that the student care about what is ROS when he doesn't know anything? I mean, he doesn't know. They, he, they have been told that ROS is the way to program robots, so they are going to learn ROS. And then afterwards, they can discuss, this is a framework, this is not an operating system, this is whatever. We are going to move how to do move it, uh, how to use move it for moving an arm. And So how can you tell them about the, this move it package and all that stuff when he doesn't know even what is an action server? So we remove a lot of stuff and we keep on the essential. This means that in our case, if this is the whole knowledge of ROS, we are not going to start teaching on the periphery of these, all those circles, but we are going to start in the center where the gray dot is located. And then we are going to select only this small part of ROS that we are going to teach. But this part is the essential one. It's the one that allows the robot to move, to uh, communicate information between the different nodes, create nodes, understand what is service, understand what is an actual server, when you have to call one thing and when you have to call another one, how to debug programs, and also how to understand packages that somebody else has done, and how to understand programs in ROS that somebody else has done. For that, you don't need to know the whole circles, all the circles here, just a little bit of slides. And then we move from the center to the periphery. So at the end, it's easier. If you have moved the robot, it's easier for you to understand, okay, so I have to install ROS. Yes, okay, I understand what I mean. So I have to download a series of packages. That's okay, but if you don't know what is a package and then you start downloading, you don't know that organization at all. Why some packages are not mine, some are from the system installed, but they don't have the source, et cetera, et cetera. All those problems that you already probably already know. Great, let's go for the third step. There are third and fourth steps in our method. Then we have removed a lot of stuff. We have selected only the important part that we want to teach. And then we do a learning by testing. So it means that uh, we make the students practice. Every small part that we are teaching is followed by a practice that makes the robot do something. By doing this, every, every concept, every new concept that the student has to learn is followed by a result on the robot. And by doing this, we are decreasing a lot the, the reward that the brain of the student has. So it allows the student to understand faster what the, the action, his actions on the, on the code, on the concept that he is learning at this moment, what are the, act, uh, the consequences of his actions on that code? And what are the consequences on the robot? And so we have shorted this very, very, a lot, a lot. But how do we do this? Uh, we do this by doing a lot of practice all the time. The problem is that still you don't have access to the robot. Because in order to do this kind of practice, you have to have access to the robot. Because otherwise, it will be like uh, testing and, and practicing a lot, but in, uh, in a screen, uh, watching numbers or watching words. This is not effective at all. You can learn like this, or again, I say, you can learn like this, but it is not effective. Not a week, in a week, <laughs> or in five days. So what do we do? So we have created, and in our implementation, we have created a platform that is web-based. What does it mean? That anybody that wants to use this platform for learning doesn't have to, to use anything but a web browser. It can connect from any type of computer, from anywhere, wherever. And in this platform, we have integrated the teachings that are on the left-hand side of this screen with a simulation of the robots that we want to use the students. So by doing this, the students have access to simulated robots in uh, as many as they want, as the lessons uh, prepare uh, contain, of course. But the lessons can be virtually uh, infinite. 
So the students can practice at, uh, with those simulator robots at any time. And uh, this is on the center, and then on the right-hand side, you can see the part where you can write the code and execute, like if you were on the real robot. Like if you had this, the real robot, this is important. This point is important because what they are learning is exactly the same that they would do if they had the real robot. Actually, there are programs that are created there can be transferred in the, to the real robot if they had the robot. Okay, so this is the part that I would like you to uh, interact with me. So if, uh, I presume you are in front of a computer. So what we are going to do is to see this platform live. And for this, you have to, let me change the share of the screen. So I'm going to... Okay, you here you can have an example of a platform that implements our method. You can access this platform at robotignite.academy. In this platform, you can see on the left-hand side all the lessons that will teach the students about the robot. On the right hand side you can see one of the robots that we are going to use for teaching ROS. In this case it's the Tartar bot. And you have a full simulation with physics, with real interactions in the world of the robot that we are going to learn how to do, how to program with ROS. Then the student will have to read all those lessons and follow step-by-step -step instructions that make them interact with the robot using ROS. In this case, we are, for example, launching a ROS program that help us to move the robot using the keys. As you can see, we have some shells that are directly connected to the robot, to the simulated robot. We have launched in that shell the ROS launcher of a ROS program and we have made the robot uh, move. Uh, you can see that we have different shells that you can select with the numbers. You can configure the whole environment in different ways in order to, to have the best view that is more convenient for you. Then in the center you can see that there is an IDE for creating the ROS programs that the lessons are requesting the student to do. And it's a full IDE that where you can create new packages, create new files, edit them, modify. In this case, I am showing a Python file, but you can do it also in C++. Also, the system allows to launch the graphical tools that ROS provides, like Arbis. In this case, you see we are launching the Arbis. There is a, a small problem there with the login button. No, nothing. You press there and retries and it's okay. And here we have RBS, launch it on a web browser. So the student, remember, the student doesn't have to install anything in the computers. Everything is provided on the web browser. Now we are going to try to see the robot, how it's represented in RBS. First we have changed the fixed frame and now we are going to add a robot um, display. Let's see, the robot display is here, robot model, select it, and yes, here there is. Now, uh, yeah, you can see and you can interact in RVs in the same way that you would do it if you install in your computer. So, um, that's it. About the, you, you can also launch the other graphical tools. And, uh, then, the, the word, how would it work? So we have different lessons related to each one of the important subjects that the student has to learn about ROS, and they are organized in this way.